Pit Fall. And of course, Zoo's relation to Mamu, Chaos, the Logos, is the word. Beware the scribes. That really happened. That really happened. The 18th Dynasty, George Bushed the button. I'm going to confirm that. And this is what uh, Young Pharaoh and I were going to have some points of contention on the war between the reptilians and Akhenaten. But I'm working my way to that. I'm not there yet. The constellation Aries is named for the, for the ram with the golden fleece in the Greek uh, myth of somebody. Aries is Latin word for ram. According to the Greek myth, according to GreekMythology.com, this one guy was the son of this king and his first wife. Blah blah blah. Um, ram is an anagram for Mars or Rams with an S. Rams R A M S is an anagram for Mars. If the M is inverted it becomes w making the word wars this is the energy that the 18th dynasty tapped into and they needed that energy to defeat the hyksos that war energy from the ram from aries this this is the reptilian shape shifting into the you know what they needed the 18th dynasty continues to grow for seven generations off this war energy from the reptilian shape shifting to a ram however by the eighth generation something goes terribly wrong and you can see my little birth chart here ah moses the first at the very top left hand corner and then under him you're going to see amenhotep that moses the first that moses the second Hatshepsut, that moses the third Amenhotep the second, Thot Moses the fourth, Amenhotep the third, and then Amenhotep the fourth, who changes his name to Akhenaten, which you see my red arrows pointing to Akhenaten. When Akhenaten comes along, this is all in the 18th dynasty, that's when things go wrong. This is, this is the energy that young Pharaoh tapped into. The, 
Remember, Young Pharaoh is special because he got his YouTube channel up to half a million. This is, Young Pharaoh's rise to fame is nothing less than the story of the 18th dynasty. The fall of a dynasty. The cult of Aten. Akhenaten defeats, I'm sorry, Akhenaten defects from the religious power structure and goes rogue due to rampant religious corruption. He publishes edicts to dismantle the current religious status quo, effectively waging war on the reptilian Agdawad. Akhenaten goes to war with these reptilian overlords who, according to Akhenaten, they are, they're reptilians. They're posing as priests, as high priests. These reptilians, who are gods, their children are priests and high priests. Their children collect tax. Their children live for an exceptionally long time and they know the secrets of the occult. These are the demigods. These are the Nephilim that were not giants and they look like normal people, but they have the bloodline of the gods, the fallen angels that mix with women. These are the reptilians that Akhenaten has a problem with. But they're not going to tell you the whole story. And this is what young Pharaoh and I were going to debate on. Well, we were supposed to just have a a conversation, but it was going to end up as a debate. Y'all already know what it's going to be. All right, so this is uh, Encyclopedia Britannica in an article titled Akhenaten, Armana, Monotheism, Pharaoh, of course, Britannica. Question, what did Akhenaten destroy? Answer, at some point after his fifth uh, regno year, Akhenaten initiated a program to erase the name and image of the Theban god, because everything started in Thebes, Amon. Amon is Amun, or Amen, as we've already confirmed. From all monuments, a decision that wreaked widespread destruction in many Egyptian temples. This is basically saying, we're gonna tear down all those pictures of white Jesus and the black church. And I'm not trying to compare the, the reptilian overlords to the white Jesus, but that's the picture that the bad guy is gonna paint because they obviously are at odds with each other. Military death blow. The 18th dynasty is considered to be the last great dynasty of Egypt as it was at its height in power and wealth. Uh, dyslexia, wealth and power. With great power comes great responsibility, and Egypt was becoming irresponsible due to outside influences. This was due to the greed of the priest of Ptah. The priest of Ptah are reptilians. Ptah is green, who embezzled the faith. Oh, I'm sorry. These, not all reptilians, family, I'm going to say this, and I know you're going to have your, your own opinion, and I'm not trying to tell you what to think. But I just don't want the family to practice absolutism, where they say something is all. Nothing is all. Press 222 if you understand not all reptilians are bad. Press 222 if you understand not all gods are good. Press 222 if you understand that... Every, that, that we live in a reality of duality and polarity, which are just fancy concepts for balance. Negative and positive, hot, cold, magnetic, electric. Tap all the way in, family. I'm not a devil. All right, fine. You're not a devil. You're an antagonist. I digress. So, Ptah and them. 
these roles were, were, were held by uh, high priests who were demigods, who were demiurges. They were half gods, half human. Uh, these are the Nephilims that were not giants, if you believe in that type of thing. After Akhenaten cut, cut off the financial fat from Pastor Portrop, he cut off Egypt's defenses by dissolving the military. These institutions would be reinstated, but would never regain their previous status. Why did Akhenaten get rid of the military? I've looked high and low, and the only person who has ever given a theory on why Akhenaten got rid of the military is young Pharaoh. And for as much as he gets on my nerves, I have to give him his respect as a polymath. I'm not saying he's a genius of polymath, but if that's the title that he wants to use, then fine. I respect you as a polymath. And the reason I do is because he said the reason Akhenaten got rid of the military is because the military had reptilians in it. Because remember, Amu, I'm sorry, uh, Amos the first, the very first person at the very top left of the 18th dynasty, he tapped into the energy of Amun. Why is this important? Because Amun is a reptilian. Young Pharaoh doesn't like Amun. Young Pharaoh likes Aten. That's his whole thing. Because the Amun Ra squad tore his ass up and made him young Pharaoh from Pharaoh Allah. You went from Allah to being young? It was demeaning. This is the original disc of Heru the Elder. This has nothing to do with Isis and Osiris. This is the original. Uh, is the, the disc of Heru the Elder on the horizon. It symbolizes man's kundalini connect connection to God as above, so below. Akhenaten lived during a time of social decline when the reptilians uh, were the high priests tearing up everything um, and there was an obvious disconnect to higher self due to the greed of the priesthood and the defamation of the gods they hosted. This social conditioning led to the exalting of Aten who remained holy as it disconnected from the fall of man. So we see the two serpents connecting to each other. This is ho the whole thing. And, 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 and if, if I have to see both sides of the story, I'm not here just downing young Pharaoh. I understand this part of the story that there were reptilians posing as high priests and they were doing bad stuff. Fine. I have no problem with that. I'm not trying to defend reptilians. I understand where young Pharaoh is right, and I'm not here just to disagree and see where he's wrong. I understand why he would say that, and this is why. And if you see those, those intertwining serpents, that's kundalini energy bringing you from lower self to higher self. So with Aten, what you're going to know or, or what you will realize is that there's going to be no staff. There's going to be no serpents. The serpent is going to be removed. The staff is going to be removed. And instead of Heru the elder, now you have Aten. Aten represents the removal from higher self and lower self. And we know the lower self is, is, is associated with the reptilian energy, with the, uh, the lowest part of the brain it is the inner brain where the reptilian brain lies. The lowest part of your spine is, is your, um, your uh, the, what is the lowest part of your spine? Those five bones, your sacral bone, your sacral bone. And those, uh, uh, that's where your kundalini energy uh, wraps around your sacral bone or Jacob's ladder three and a half times. You can Google that, three and a half. Yes, that's correct, uh, Ice Hawk, the coccyx. Uh, thank you so much, Will Justice, because uh, I was kind of getting fuzzy for a second. So keep me honest on that. Ice Hawk, yes, tailbone, that's true. Um, oh, sacrum, Ice Hawk is on it. So apparently he already knows what I'm talking about. That's all wise, right, and exact, good brother. Um, so yeah, with that said, let's continue on. So um, this is where you see the war between the reptilians and Aten. 
Atin is the dis, the reptilians are, is lower self going to higher self. And we see higher self goes to lower self. So Atin was like, we getting the reptilians out of here. This is why young Pharaoh talks so bad about the reptilians. This social conditioning led to the exalting of Aten, who remained holy as it disconnected from the fall of man. This quarrel bears, bears an uncanny resemblance to that of Jesus when he took the exact same issue with the Pharisees and Sadducees who made the temple a marketplace. The, the whole issue between the reptilians versus Akhenaten, that was the same thing with Jesus versus the high priest. But versus Akhenaten, that was the same thing with Jesus versus the high priest. Family. And y'all know. A, a lot of you probably don't. But the, my real family, they know that I have high respect for the reptilians. I have high respect for the dragons. I have high respect for the serpent. I have high respect for the king cobra and the queen cobra. I have high respect. But I'm not going to lie to nobody. Press 666 if you understand that these so-called bad reptilians are high priest even to this day. Even to this day, a lot of your Catholic um, leaders, people inside the, um, the, um, the, uh, the Vatican, a lot of these high priests, they, they have this reptilian bloodline. Press 666 if you understand a lot of these high priests have reptilian bloodline. Not saying they're full blood reptilian. I mean, these are the babies. These are the Nephilim that never became giants. They live for a long time. They're, 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 um, they're archons. But Jesus had the same issue with these uh, reptilian overlords. Uh, who were posing as high priests. With that said, uh, Jesus entered the temple and the courts and drove out all who were bullying, uh, buying and selling there. Selling there, he flipped the tables uh, uh, of money, of money changers. Because remember, a lot of these high priests, these um, these demigods, a lot of these demigods are in the banking system as well. A lot of these reptilian uh, perpetrators are going to be in the church and the banking system. And you're going to see that not only with Pharaoh Akhenaten, you're going to see that same story in the Bible. Uh, he flipped the tables of money changers and the benches of those selling doves. It is written, he said to them, my house will be called the house of prayer, but you are making it a den of thieves. In the temple court, he found men, and it's just a story told, told again, moving forward. So where have you heard this story before? This is the same, because remember, uh, Akhenaten is the one who's going to bring you monotheism. Monotheism, Akhenaten brings you Christianity. Akhenaten also brings you Islam. Why did Young Pharaoh do all those videos talking crap about Christianity and, and, and Islam, and then you go join the, 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 the cult of Aten? Muhammad had the exact same story where he goes to war with the priesthood. The, these reptilian priests, now Aten is the hidden one. Aten is Yahweh. The Hebrew name of God is Tetragrammaton or Aten. Look at the very end of the word Tetragrammaton. Can somebody please look at the word Tetragrammaton and look at the very end of it? You're going to see the name Aten. And then those four letters of Aten, A T O N, are translated as Yahweh. And it's translated as Lord. Aten is Lord. Tetra means four. Grandma means unit of weight, letter, or character in Greek. Grammat, uh, grammatis, 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 I can't say it, means the one who teaches letters in Greek. Grammar also refers to learning magic, incantations, or spells. In this sense, tetragrammaton could mean the four magic letter, A-T-O-N, or a ton who teaches four 
magic letters. Aten is stealing the style of Amun, who is the hidden one, and Aten is hidden in Yahweh. Just like young Pharaoh stole the style of Polite, his nemesis. You can't make this up. Aten is a don. Judy, uh, Judaic tradition may also refer to the Lord as Adonai. Ad uh, Adon is really a ton. According to Wikipedia in an article titled Names of God in Judaism, it says the singular forms Adon and Adonai, meaning my Lord, are used in the Hebrew Bible as royal titles as in the first book of Samuel and for distinguished persons. The Phoenicians used it as a title for Tammuz, the origin of the Greek Adonis. It is also used very occasionally in Hebrew texts to refer to God. Let's go back to the book of Psalms. Aten is the Hebrew God that uh, young Pharaoh talks so badly about. Aten is Odin. The mythical Odin, who is King Dan the First, is said to be in legend the first unofficial founder king of Denmark, which is really Denmark, who had reigned before Christ in the BC. He was the unofficial founder king, making the monarchy of Denmark the oldest in Europe. King Dan the First. These names are actually titles or assumed names that are derived from Hebrew word Adonai. I didn't type this up. This is copy paste. The pronunciation of the Tetragrammaton came to be avoided in the Hellenistic period. Therefore, Jews use Adonai instead in prayers. Adonai, the name of both deity and to man, is used approximately 449 times in the Old Testament and 350 times in conjunction with Yahweh. The name Dan is short for Wodan or Odin, whose names are titles that originate from Adonai. Thus, the name of the Lord, the Jews use Adonai. The, great, the Greeks use Adonai. The Norse use Odin. And the Anglo-Saxons use Woden. Y'all sitting here talking so much crap about these religions. And then you're going to sign up for the cult of Aten? Y'all talk, y'all sign up for every single, to, to bash every single religion, and then you sign up to be in the cult of I. Young Pharaoh, we're going to have to have a conversation about that one day, respectfully. Aten uh, is Leviathan. Leviathan is a sea monster in the Old Testament. Levi means tax, or levy means tax. And Athen is a ton meaning taxation for a time or Yahweh. This is the four letter tetragrammaton God this, that, that is running this big cult called the cult of Aten. Both the Nama, uh, Nabataean kingdom and Athens in Greece refer to Aten. So go, go look at the uh, the word Athens that comes from Aten. The Nabataeans that has Aten in there. Aten birthed monotheism, which was initiated with the nuclear war. The Abrahamic religions were inspired by monotheism, followed uh, the mono the Abrahamic religions, which were inspired by monotheism followed in true fashion by launching their own, their very own, holy wars. I I this demonization of Amun becomes literal as the word demon originates from Amun. 
I was, I was initially going to name this video Crumb vs. Young Pharaoh Demons vs. Satan Crumb vs. Young Pharaoh Demons vs. Satan What slide am I on? I'm on slide 79 Let me go back to the top Look, look, it says Satan vs. Demon This is where I get into the Satan vs. Demon And talk this demonization of Amun becomes literal as the word demon originates from Amun. This is according to Amun, the Wikipedia article. The Greeks of the Lower Nile Delta combined features of the supreme god Zeus with features of the Egyptian god Amun. Amun, worshipped by the Greeks as Amon, had a temple and a statue, the gift of Pindar. So now you're going to see where... Um, they worshipped, uh, the Greeks worshipped Amun, but they called him A-M-M-O-N. That's the part I want you to pay attention to. A-M-M-O-N. So now, um, the term demon is, this is according to uh, Encyclop Encyclopedia Britannica. The term demon is derived from the Greek word Damien which means a supernatural being or a spirit or maybe even an alien. Though it, it, it has commonly been associated with an evil or malevolent spirit, the term originally meant a spiritual being that influenced a person's character. Because remember, Amos had channeled this reptilian energy so he can kick the Hyksos' ass. So now you have a demon. Um, I'm sorry, here, let me back up. Now you have uh, the Greeks worshipped Amon, A-M-M-O-N. And the Greeks also called a demon a supernatural spirit. And you look at the spelling of a demon. It's D, let's just pretend that D's not there. A-I-M-O-N. The ram is determined to be evil by Akhenaten, and its deranged version is a goat. They presented Amun to you as a goat, and they told you that Amun is the Baphomet. He's bad. He's a goat god. Because Amun has always been demonized. But he was demonized by Akhenaten and that monotheism boulder dash. My little thing says, Above is a painting of Amun, one of the creator gods in Egyptian mythology, decorates the tomb of Luxor, Egypt. Amun often appears as a human figure with arms, head, as uh, with a ram's, with, with human, a human figure and ram's head as he is the, uh, the predecessor of Baphomet. When Christians say Amen, they are worshiping and giving power to the opposite of what they intended out of ignorance. Related names to the name Damien. According to moms who think, uh, re related names to Damien is Amon, A-M-M-O-N. The related name to Damien is Amon. Let's go back. Damien is a supernatural spirit. And the Greeks worshipped Amon as a supernatural spirit. So when I tell you that Amun is the demon, Amun is a demon. Amun is the newly formed ram god inspires mimicry Greco-Roman culture. So on the far left, you're going to see Amon or Amun with his goat head. In the middle, you're going to see Jupiter with his goat rams. I'm sorry, goat rams. His goat horns. And then to the far right, you're going to see um, uh, Zeus, Amon, with those same horns. And those horns represent the hippocampus. The part of the brain but nonetheless so i just want to make sure that we understand a moon has been demonized as a demon and this is very literal he, he's the goat he's the baphomet he's this he's that uh i am 
finally becomes Satan. Once the cult of Amun was restored, Aten became, or Atan, became the outcast, the enemy, or the ad, ad, adversary for the ruling class. Aten became Satan. Look at, press 999 if you can see the word Aten inside the word Satan. Remember, the vowels are interchangeable. Aten became Satan, the devil and Lucifer in Christian mythology, and Shaitan for Muslims. In voodoo, the Judeo-Christian concepts of heaven and hell seem surprisingly irrelevant. Instead, the soul will have an altogether different destiny, a unique form of reincarnation, Heaven is the other side of the mirror. It's just beyond what's visible, but it's not out there. Hell doesn't exist at all. There is no place of eternal damnation after death. Uh, souls migrate after death. Souls go under the water. And if the family initiates the right rituals for that soul after death, the soul will then migrate into the body of future generations of that family so that there's a circle of life and death. These snakes are saints and they stand. They are shown standing, bridging heaven and earth under God. During slavery, when Africans were forced to practice voodoo in secret, they concealed their worship of the snake god, Dambala, by honoring the image of St. Patrick, who is said to have banished snakes from Ireland. Today, Dambala continues to be viewed as a god who bestows health and prosperity. But what is the source of the serpent's ancient power? The repository of all spiritual wisdom in voodoo is Dambalawe Do, the serpent god. And the serpent god also brought the falling rain that fertilized the earth. And when the rain fell, uh, a rainbow was reflected, who is Aida We Do. And Dambalawe Do, the serpent god, fell in love with Aida, and their love entwined them in a cosmic helix from which all life was fertilized. The snake is only one of many animals with religious significance in voodoo deities who actively shape the lives and fortunes of human beings. Among those deities were Ogu, god of iron and war, Gede, god of sexuality, Aida Wedo, the great mother goddess. How many voodoo gods exist? Both summon and celebrate the gods. In each voodoo ceremony, such as at this one in Benin, West Africa, drums serve as a potent force to attract the deities. There's always a battery of drums. Of course, each one of the drums has a separate rhythm, a separate invocation. It's almost like a spiritual telegraph to the spirits and calling them forth to, to, to bless us with their presence. Voodoo drums are considered by believers to be sacred objects, possessing such enormous power that only the initiated are permitted to touch them. As the drums cast their rhythmic spell on the dancers, they summon the gods. But who are these deities that the ceremony is designed to satisfy? Where the gods of other religions may be models of divine perfection, the voodoo gods are remarkable for a surprisingly different reason. I think the most characteristic 
uh, feature of these gods is their humanness. Some uh, are very strong and aggressive, others are very cool and soothing, and the whole gamut of human identities and faiths are heaped with offerings. They have their own color. Some like red wine, some like rum. Each one of them, they have their own color, their own fruit, foods, and drink. So that's why you see the altar decorated in the different colors. Among the most popular and powerful of the Loa to whom offerings are made is Ogun, god of iron. As with other Loa, a birthday party is held every year in Ogun's honor. He comes last and stays the longest because we have food for him and drink for him. He loves cigars, he likes rum, and we have cake and some of his food upstairs. So when he comes, we will sing our hearts out and we'll do everything to make it an entertaining experience for him. As part of the celebration, these birthday cakes have been baked for the deities. The color of their icing has been carefully selected. Herbs is a very big part of all African-based religions. Simply because we believe the earth is where we come from, the earth is where we go back to. And in each tree, bush, plant, it has a spirit. And it's a good spirit, a healing spirit. The day of the pilgrimage begins with Mambo Angela and her group visiting the Catholic Church of Sodo to pray for success. It has been said that Haiti is 80% Catholic, 20% Protestant, and 100% Voodoo. Instead of viewing Catholicism as conflicting with Voodoo, initiates see it as enhancing Voodoo's power. Uh, what you put in this girl, but it's crack. 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 I don't know what she put in this. I don't know what she put in this girl, but it's crack. 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 Mother, you sure this science thing going work? Well? If you don't calm down, I'm going to put you out. Breathe. Breathe. Oh. 
Oh, my darling. Good boy. Good boy. <laughs> Breathe, my darling. Breathe. Keep breathing. Good. You see? You seem strong. And Nancy knew it when him survived the vaccinations that kill all of the other pygmy them. I am the rock. Anybody want to leave? Knows the time. That's far too much. Why well, you been so generous? Unhelpful. Me God. And it only takes a few drops. Oh yeah, a little dab would do you. It poisons you. I test it. So when I check him, my last in hand, and if him slip a gun with him hand, I'm gonna put on a iron shirt and just sit down out of breath. I'm gonna put on a iron shirt and chase the devil out of breath. Cause you. Them call me Bushmaster. Who are you? The stone the builders refused. Things that come from the earth. Shining, weather is sweet now. Make you wanna move your dancing feet here. But to the rescue, here I am. Look here, child. <laughs>
understand Play it your once I got you, I got you You can never capture the hell of that You're calm and progressive Get in terror, break the shot, I sever The head from the shoulders and better Than my competitor, you mean you're better than whatever